What's up? Vous êtes avec Naufrage et je serai votre host pour cette nouvelle web série qui s'appelle Hit Stories, dans laquelle on décortique l'histoire derrière les plus grands succès musicaux. Vous allez en savoir plus sur le contexte sociopolitique, l'industrie musicale de l'époque, le processus créatif, l'expérience des artistes et de tous les gens qui ont été impliqués dans l'histoire, et tout ça en parsemant l'affaire d'anecdotes exclusives. Je suis présentement au bureau de Hip Hop Music et en présence de quelqu'un de très spécial qui a travaillé dans la réalisation de l'album Mentalité Moonmord de Mosaïen. Son nom, c'est Haig V. Je te laisse te présenter. Allô, merci Yuri, bonjour. Je suis Haig Vartspedian, Haig V de Zubon dans le temps. Comme Yuri a dit, réalisateur, beatsmith, ingénieur de son. Parle-nous un peu de Haig V dans les années 90 et de comment la rencontre avec Mosaïen s'est faite à travers tout ça. Wow! Les années 90, euh, on avait, comme je dis, une maison de disques, euh, Zubon Records. Et, euh, et euh, euh, excuse-moi, une maison de production, euh, Zubon Productions, qu'on faisait. Et puis, euh, notre, euh, on avait comme un, un mandat de, de produire, de, de travailler avec des, des artistes locaux euh, qui avaient comme un... Et assez comme des messages à dire, pas juste euh, fun and games, mais c'est des, des choses euh, sociaux, des choses qui étaient importantes à des gens qui, qui étaient en train de trouver leur identité, voulaient avoir leur voix dans un monde qui est toujours en train de changer. Alors voilà, c'était notre mandat de produire beaucoup de musique urbaine, hip-hop, puis euh, on travaillait avec... Euh, avec des, des Montréalais comme Misery, qui est le, le frère euh, aîné de SP, qui est, était une grande inspiration pour SP. Puis euh, Grandmaster Garner, Gandhi, il y avait, il y avait Arcade, et, il y avait Bad News Brown aussi. Euh, il y avait euh, un peu à côté, mais il y avait aussi Brand Van 3000, que, qui était euh, un groupe que j'ai produit euh, et fait beaucoup de programmation pour. Puis c'est ça, c'est euh, plus ou moins, euh, je pense, dans un nutshell, c'est euh, là où I was, in that, I was in that headspace right there. C'est très intéressant parce qu'il y a beaucoup de gens comme moi qui, qui entendaient euh, ces chansons-là. Tu as cité des noms que, qui résonnent euh, dans ma tête. Puis euh, est-ce que tu peux nous dire des exemples de titres qui sont connus sur lesquels que toi tu as travaillé dans la réalisation, des exemples précis pour certains de ces groupes-là? Euh, oui, ben, euh, je dirais, ben, pour, pour uh, Brand Van, c'était Drinking in LA. Je pense que c'est la chanson que, que beaucoup de gens connaissent. Puis euh, je fais la programmation, les beats, je fais les enregistrements, puis euh, tout ça. Puis il y avait comme uh, Grandmaster Garner, Gandhi, il y avait une un, un chanson appelée The Solution qui était... Euh, comme, euh, je dirais, c'était un de, de nos premiers 12 pouces, puis dans l'underground hip-hop, euh, on a fait des waves avec, je pense, avec cette chanson. Puis, euh, intéressant que c'était des collaborations de travail avec des gens comme Misery et Gandhi, et euh, qui étaient comme un, un pas avant de rencontrer Muzayan. Puis je pense que autant qu'on qu s'est rencontré avec Muzayan, Muzayan avait, ils, étaient, ils étaient déjà dans la connaissance qu'il y avait quelque chose qui était en train de se faire tu sais, dehors. Comme, comme, comme on parlait avant Montréal dans les années 90, juste pas Montréal, mais partout, mais hip-hop, c'était vraiment cliqué. Tout le monde se gardait avec leur crew, puis tout le monde était le meilleur. Tu sais. That was what you had to exude, was you are the best, and you know, that's that. So, pour essayer de, de faire des collaborations, pour garder un sens de communauté, tu sais, you had to get out of your comfort zone and you had to be very, uh, you know, obviously enamored and uh, respectful of, of all the other crews because you were bringing something to the table that was elevating both of you and you weren't taking anything away and you were neither, you know, placing yourself above or below anyone else. So dans ce temps-là, comme tu sais, je faisais beaucoup de hip-hop anglais, anglophone, d'ici. Et euh, la chose qui était intéressante, c'est qu'avec Mouzayan, quand on s'est rencontrés, on faisait une soirée appelée euh, Montreal Massive, au Galerie Isard. Et dans ce temps-là, c'était euh, sur euh, Saint-Antoine, 
devant l'ancienne building de, de, du Gazette. Et euh, dans ce galerie, on faisait ce soirée Montreal Massive 20 fois par mois. Puis euh, il était comme des... Euh, on, on, on invitait des groupes partout, de, partout à Montréal, de Québec, de, de Canada, de, des États-Unis même. Puis euh, c'était vraiment juste un, un stage pour... Euh, you know, pour to celebrate and to bring, you know, different people that had something to say up on stage. And uh, Muzayan, fortunately, was one of those groups. Puis dès que, tu sais, on s'est rencontrés, j'étais comme, wow, il y a quelque chose spécial avec ce groupe. Il y a une profondeur que j'ai pas rencontrée jusqu'à ce moment-là, dans les paroles, dans la façon d'écrire. Il y avait des, you know, There was multiple, uh, how would I say it? It's like layers, layers non-diegetic. Vraiment, dans, il y a des, des layers. Puis je me suis dit que il y a une façon de prendre ça puis de faire quelque chose de classique avec, uh, où toutes ces layers peuvent ressortir avec le temps. Tu sais, j'étais vraiment comme la première chose que I remember thinking was this should be a classic, this has to be an anthem. And, it, and you know, it's not like I was sure it was going to be, but that was ironically one of the first thoughts I had was, this is a generational anthem. How do I, you know, how do I take this and bring out the best, best colors of this? Donc, euh, formellement, est-ce que tu peux nous parler en détail de c'était quoi ton rôle de producer pour euh, le single La Vie de Sénèque? C'est quoi exactement... Euh, le, comment qu'on définit le rôle d'un producer puis pour cette chanson-là, co comment que ça a été en détail? Sure. Ben, je, je pense que dans, dans le monde de musique, euh, il y a, on peut mettre le titre de producer euh, sur beaucoup d'affaires parce que c'est un rôle qui est vraiment ouvert. C'est comme, you know, comme un film director. Puis je, je dirais que probablement what you're, you know, what I'm uh, what I'm in um, the word what I'm in uh, what I'm in uh, oh brain fart <laughs> if, uh, if I'm thinking about what it would take yeah the different roles of a producer it's like sometimes you know on peut-être on fait des beats peut-être il y a des des ajustements à faire c'est de la façon que le chanson sort c'est comme c'est vraiment comme un, entre un psychologiste, un psychologue dans la studio, puis quelqu'un qui peut finir la chanson, mais aussi payer hommage. C'est ça que j'allais dire, je pense. C'est <coughs> de garder le respect pour payer l'hommage aux chansons que, comme véhicule, comme réalisateur, on fait seulement ce que la chanson a besoin. On essaie de ne pas... You try not to overproduce a song, but I think being... Uh, You know, being conscious, that's the word I was looking for before, being conscious of what elements to add to un parole, to uh, un production, to not sort of, not make it self-aware, but also just to make it enough so that the song is at complete fruition. C'était comment le processus créatif euh, complet euh, de la chanson euh, vraiment du début euh, à la fin, je sais qu'il y a eu une version euh, initiale au départ, puis qu'après il y a eu une deuxième version euh, finale. Raconte-nous vraiment de A à Z comment que ça s'est passé euh, avec Mozart. Ce que je me souviens, c'est que une des choses que je voulais vraiment faire avec cet album, j'ai demandé au band euh, de faire des démos. Qui est, et c'est pas, c'est comme ils avaient les, tu sais, ils ont ramassé des beats, ils avaient des paroles sur papier de ce que je, je souviens, mais je voulais vraiment avoir une idée claire de où ils voulaient aller avec ces affaires. Alors je leur ai stipulé de rentrer dans le studio avant qu'ils viennent chez moi, puis de enregistrer des versions de toutes les paroles avec, you know tout qu'on a comme des démos, mais, mais c'était vraiment entre des démos parce que c'est pas comme... C'était des démos où you would flush out the idea so that everybody could hear it, especially me, and to get a sense of, I suppose, the exercise was to see 
where, you know, out of stream of thought, how Mazayan placed their own words and their own, their own ideas so that we could lay it on a table in a cohesive way. And from that angle, I could say, okay, I, I totally, I have a clear idea of your most pure sort of expression. And now, as a producer, ce que je vais essayer de faire, c'est de prendre cet aspect de trouver une façon de, to build around the lyrics and build around the ideas to give power, you know, to, to give power to the, to the lyrics and to the, uh, to the concepts of the songs. And as I said, the whole album, even though that one song was, you know, very popular, I saw tout l'album était comme une, you know, they were pieces, components of, an, of, a, of, a, of a bigger, uh, you know, of a bigger uh, uh, animal, let's say. And so once we planned all this stuff out, La Vie de Sineg, ils avaient, J.K. avait déjà l'idée, c'était un loop de Sweet Mickey, qui était une chanson assez populaire. Tout le monde le savait alors. Il y avait déjà cet, cet aspect du, du hommage avec cette chanson. You know, the, the, the nucleus, the seed of it was already there. And what I felt when I heard it initially, I was like, this is great, but I think we need to expand on this. I think it's a... It starts here, but as the song goes, you know, there should be, we should have a, um, a progression and there should be an evolution. And that was my idea, was that to make, uh, you know, a juxtaposition, a, a counter, let's say, because the lyrics were so bleak, is to, you know, on, and it's on this compat track, this very happy celebratory track. And then the interesting thing was, I think this was this was one of the the points of turning which made the song turn something else was when the choruses came in I wanted it to evolve and become more inclusive and interestingly enough in the 90s you know the Haitians were a lot younger community than let's say the Jamaicans were in Montreal they were very well established and if I remember correctly in the 90s the Haitians didn't feel quite à l'aise à Montreal as much as the Jamaicans did there was there was a bit of, you know, I, it, it wasn't like friction in a bad way, but, you know, it was trying to come to, you know, finding a voice. And there was, there was pushback. There was, a, you know, there was a bit of cultural thing. And so when I came through, I was like, let's make the choruses dance hall. Let's make them Jamaican dance hall Caribbean. And the band was kind of like, ooh, I don't know about that. You know, maybe we're stepping too much outside. And I was like, well, I see it as a way of bringing people together. It's a way of showing that there's a union. And as we move forward, we have more in common than less. And what's happening is this is becoming a celebration and it's showing that there's so many different elements that can be included in this, right? And I think at that moment, that was a moment that I had to stand you know, I had to stand firm because it was difficult because there was four of them. They were very young, they were headstrong. And I was like, consider, you know, consider this. Like we had to take time and I think we had to, it, it took a while for everybody to get comfortable with moving in that direction and not feeling like we were, you know, stepping out of a comfort zone, right? So that was it. It was getting musicians in, taking the original Sweet Mickey without losing that, that vibe and expanding on it, bringing more organic elements into it, and basically taking something nostalgic and familiar and pushing it out into the future, into something that's more unifying and inclusive and celebratory. Ben, J'imagine un, un peu le défi, parce que là, euh, tu, tu travaillais avec euh, des artistes qui étaient euh, quand même jeunes, mais euh, on le voit aujourd'hui, euh, chacun de ces artistes-là sont devenus des directeurs artistiques, réalisateurs, ils travaillent avec d'autres artistes et tout ça, donc j'imagine que dans ce temps-là, ils avaient aussi des visions, une façon de voir les choses, puis euh, des fois ça pouvait peut-être, euh, ils voulaient véhiculer euh, leur, leur vision, leur idée, en même temps ils écoutaient la tienne, des fois peut-être qu'il y avait des incompréhensions, puis là finalement vous avez créé un produit que tout le monde était d'accord, mais j'imagine que ça a été un, un, un défi dans le processus en tant que tel, d'en arriver... Euh, un accord. La chose que j'ai, you know, the one thing I picked up early dans ma carrière, c'est que producers never write. You know, the producer, I mean, when I say never write, c'est important, c'est, it's crucial to listen to the artist. It's, 
it's not as much as you know some artists may may be limited technically and they may not be able to express themselves the way they want doesn't mean that you should you know assume that you know what they want alors après tu sais après j'ai fait quelque chose uh, comme brand van through a mirror ou stay aussi and you know it was basically it was a it was a tug of war in ways you know james wanted to go in one direction i wanted to go in the other and when we ended up in the middle and that's where something interesting happened and so i was never about this is what i'm gonna you know this is what we have to do so whenever cj kill ou impasse ou dramatique avait quelque chose à dire j'étais i was all ears je voulais écouter être certain que je comprenais ce qu'il voulait que la chose que j'ai, j'ai, you know, what I delivered was basically, you know, always double checking, you know, did we cross the I's, sorry, did we dot the I's and cross the T's, you know, did we get everything, are we on, are we on, are we on schedule, you know, are we covering all the bases, P, you know, du, du côté comme travailler avec des, des, des artistes jeunes qui savent ce qu'ils veulent, C'est sûr qu'il y a, you know, they could be headstrong, but in a good way, that's not a bad thing, you know. That that doesn't scare me what, whatsoever. C'est, if anything, pour moi, c'est un av- avantage parce que je savais qu'il était vraiment clair avec ce qu'il voulait et on, on, on aurait des discussions. Puis c'est ça qui était important. On, on passait beaucoup de temps avant le studio, après le studio, juste en parlant de la vie, de la culture, de la musique. Des, you know, de, c'est ça, c'est du vie. C'est, c'est, je pense que c'est ces mots-là où, où you can really get go in deep and find out what makes a person tick. And there's even ways that people reveal themselves that you could never learn. You know, and it's and it's in that moment of abandon where somebody is not, you know, you're not asking something directly of somebody. They give off something that makes me go, wow that is i got to put that in the song somehow so on a passé beaucoup de temps je pense pour moi c'était de you know de garder de, de faire une belle collection de ces notes de ces de ces attitudes et de trouver une façon c'est ça de de la communiquer et de aussi you know to stand my ground where i felt like we should try something new or we should rewrite something or you know my job in there which was difficult, I think, at the time, was that I was not a yes man. I, I'm not a yes man, you know? I don't go in the studio and, oh, that's great, and sure, obviously, if something's great, I'm gonna be like, dude, that was amazing. But I try and understand the capacity of an artist from A to Z, and then my job is to push them to be the best they can be. So, you know, rappers, they're always the best, but, the difference is there's a difference between being totally focused best and being t- you know the tuesday best or whatever you know better than everybody else so i was just always about trying to make sure that you know in my mind i'd be like that was good but i've heard her or him do better and i'm going to keep that one take notes but let's try and do one more, try and be a little more like this or a little more like that. Try to emphasize this in this part. Try to take a breath here. Try to lay back because I think that delivering this way will give more meaning, you know, to the, to the thing. So yeah, it's, it's crazy, but there's a lot of details, right? A lot of details involved going back. We did about 30 versions, I think, of Levitzineg, uh, different arrangements, you know, until finally, you know, I decided, boom, that's it. And, you know, the band probably said, dude, enough. That was it. I said, yeah, you're right. That was my favorite so far, too. So now that I've explored all the avenues of, you know, where this song can go, here's the version that best suits the song. So, how much time? Wow, je sais pas. Dans, je dirais, pour tout l'album, ça, ça nous a pris, ça m'a pris quatre mois. Uh, comme au complet, probablement 16 heures par jour, uh, 6-7 heures par semaine. Puis c'était comme un, un, une implication au complet, like a total immersion into their world, into everything that is Mosaïan. And that was, the, that was the way for me to do it, you know, is to get totally immersed so that I could understand. It was like living and breathing 
you know, for that period of time to really get as close as possible to ground level on the foundation of what it was that was important and what we were trying to create. Est-ce que tu te rappelles euh, de l'entourage de Mosaïen? J'imagine qu'il y avait d'autres gens qui venaient au studio des fois, comme le voyou spécifiquement. Est-ce que tu te rappelles de comment qu'il était en studio? Ah oh, oui, ben il y avait toujours, le, tu sais, il y avait toujours la famille Mosaïen qui était là. There are a bunch of, you know, sweet, loving individuals, always supportive and, you know, Everybody would come in and bring the fire. It was always a family, you know. I think that that made a difference too, because a lot of people don't realize when you're in the studio, you have a an artist on the other side. He's bearing his soul on the other side of that glass, and you know, even something as disconnected as as a laugh. If the artist is looking over and people aren't paying attention to him and they're laughing, you know, that is very detracting for an artist. They might just be like, "Are they? Did I do something funny? Am I laughing?" So that you know, you got to keep anybody who's in that room has to be 100% supportive and has to just completely, you know, be on the uh, be on the program, so to speak. And so, just to say, I w at first I was kind of like, do we need so many people in the studio? How are we going to keep this focused? But when I saw that the respect was there from everybody, and everybody was actually bringing something that maintained a certain level of uh, professionalism and you know of inspiration. It was like, bring it on, keep it going. Est-ce que tu trouves que le travail du réalisateur euh, est suffisamment mis de l'avant ou c'est un travail en arrière-plan qui doit rester en arrière-plan ou au contraire, on devrait le mettre vraiment la lumière dessus? Je dirais qu'il ben, y a toujours un peu de... Je dirais qu'il y a toujours un peu d'espace de, pour euh, parler des, des réalisateurs, je, je dirais, mais j'imagine. Euh, mais c'est comme... Uh, you know, it's like a movie director. A lot of the time, I find it fascinating that you know you can have a music producer that basically makes a beat and gives it to a group and technically they produced it but they may not have even been in the studio when the recording was done they may not have had any say in how you know the overall thing turned out so i don't know like i always you know not to take away from anyone's process because everyone's process is valid what's important is the end result but the way i always approached it You know, I bet definitely wasn't necessarily, it was an ego thing, but it was really, I tried to implicate myself as much as I could, but also trying to stay out of the way. Because the last thing, you know, I don't want to push necessarily Hey Gvi, but also, you know, in, in, in Dans le Respect de Muzayan, uh, you know, they always, they always big me up. So I know that they were always very, uh, they were always very thankful. They understood exactly what I brought to the table and how I helped them, you know, get their ideas out as powerfully and as clearly and as concisely as possible. So, I mean, in general, I, I think, especially in this day and age where you don't really get, it's only at a certain echelon of, uh, of, of diffusion that you start hearing the producer's name. And uh, that's something that's, it's a little, you know, when, I, when you speak to a lot of producers and people who are in the industry, put tons of hours into productions that you don't know about. It, it can be very, you know, it's, it's, uh, c'est décourageant. Parce qu'on on met beaucoup d'heures, tu sais, et ça nous a pris des années et des, you know, beaucoup, like, takes years and years and years and years of focus to, like, understand, you know, like, I, I had the pleasure of growing up with amazing producers like Quincy Jones, Brian Eno, people who really, they, they created, uh, they created basically the book for, for the things you could do for, for production and how art, how to bring art to the table, how to, you know, coax the best out of people. And so that was, interestingly enough, that was at a time that we had the luxury of, uh, getting people to do it's like it's like you're in a movie and the take isn't right if it takes three months to redo a take you kind of do it because what matters is getting the take it doesn't matter how long it takes but the only thing that matters is the end result so in this day and age it's, it's a lot more difficult to do that you can't spend weeks and months necessarily it's you know it's a luxury to be able to do that on a, on, a, on artwork so doing all those things and realizing that you have to do them, it's not up to the band, right? So having said that quickly, I would say that I think what's important as a producer that gets overlooked is that 
you have to create um, you have to create a a respect between the band and the producer. They have to trust you. And the moment that a producer, because you're like, you know, I hate to use the word, but you're like the fifth Beatle. You're, you're that fifth member of the band. You're telling them you could do better. I think what you just did was great, but I've, you know, you, you should do a little more of this and a little that let of, less of that. And so that that level of being of being uh, confident that the person on the other side of the glass is giving you criticism, and that you're going to take that criticism and use it to better your 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 art with or your expression with. I think that is that's an important relationship that a lot of people don't understand that is crucial to making uh, to making really good records because you have to have that that respect and that trust. And so it's a very long-winded answer, but to get back to my original point, uh, it's always welcome to have uh, to have producers get a little more, uh, you know, a little more, uh, I guess, uh, light. light and a little more uh, insight and uh, appreciation on what it is that they do to bring art, art to life. Ça fait partie de la mission euh, de la plateforme Hit Story, justement, de montrer l'ensemble des créateurs, tu sais. Souvent, l'artiste, c'est sûr que l'artiste a un immense talent, mais c'est tout un travail d'équipe aussi. Euh, comment tu as trouvé la réaction du public? Est-ce que c'est quelque chose qui t'a surpris ou tu n'étais pas surpris? C est, c est, la chanson était tellement bonne que c'est juste normal ou bien ça t'a surpris? Et puis, non seulement le public, mais aussi l'industrie en général. Euh, comment ça, ça a été quoi ta réaction face aux réactions du public et de l'industrie? Wow! Ben, J'étais... I was pleasantly, pleasantly surprised. Euh, on ne sait jamais, c'est comme on, on fait une chanson puis euh, on le sent, mais en même temps, on ne sait jamais parce que, you know, it's a crapshoot. You put a song out, le timing, l'équipe, le budget, euh, man, c'est comme on ne sait jamais. Alors, je voulais, tu sais, je, je savais qu'on a, j'étais vraiment fier puis je savais au moment qu'on a livré l'album au BMG qu'on avait quelque chose de spécial. J'avais un mandat, puis je pense que je l'ai, you know, I achieved the mandate of making, you know, something that was special, a timeless record. So, je, non, on, on, on oublie ça, puis l'année dernière, après Covid, je sortis à une boîte, puis il jouait la vitineg. J'étais, you know, my jaw dropped when I saw two, three generations removed, the reaction of the dance floor. You, you, you might be able to see the goosebumps, right? I, I'm actually getting goosebumps. I was, oh my God, like, I, you never think, you, you know, I don't think anybody could think that de trois générations après, you know, that your music could have an impact, but wow, it was, it was, it was like, you know, I was walking on 10 feet waves and I was just blown away and so thankful that, you know, just made me go, wow, we did it, we did it. We actually accomplished you know, the goal. So kudos to, to all of us, like, you know, crazy shit. The thing we like to say is that there was an impact cultural, generational. We can see it even at the Festival of the Year in Quebec, that there were hundreds of thousands of people who were singing. It's considered as the national des Haitians, but also of Quebecois. So that's what I want to say by impact cultural. C'est ça. Donc, euh, bon travail pour ça, puis merci euh, pour tout euh, ce partage-là que tu nous as fait. Est-ce que tu as d'autres mots à rajouter? Je dirais juste merci pour... Uh, thank you for uh, recognizing, you know, the, the contribution and giving, uh, giving me a chance and us a chance to, you know, to speak our, our, our words and to express our thanks. Thank you, man. Pleasure. Great. Great stuff.